Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Brianne Beebe. Today we're talking about Google Docs. But before we start, if you're looking for anything else, if you go over to my YouTube channel and go to the playlist, we'll find a Google Tools for Teachers playlist and a Teacher Tech Tutorials playlist. That's where this video will also end up, but then you can also see things about Google Forms, Google Sheets, and Microsoft Word and PowerPoint, among other tech tools. Okay, so the reason that I put off doing the Google Docs video for so long was there wasn't a feature that I absolutely loved where I was like, oh, we definitely need to talk about this. But now there is one that I wanted to share about. It's the document tabs. But before we get there, this is the checklist that I was using at the end of the year. So as we got to the end of the school year and I no longer needed to be in this constant cycle of lesson planning. I was trying to figure out, okay, so what am I going to do with my time here? And I made a basically to-do list and I love a good to-do list and I really love having them on paper because if it's out of sight, it can be out of mind. But what I got into the habit of doing was opening this document up every day and I started out with just the end of the year to-do list and I just used this up here, the checklist, and you do get the option of, you can have it check off and cross out, or you could just check it off, but it's going to give you these boxes here that you can check and uncheck when you get these things done. So the big reason that I went with a Google Doc checklist instead of something on paper is I was continuously updating this. As I went along throughout the list, I would add things in, and I decided if I was going to go through the trouble of creating this now, I might as well make it so that it's usable for following years. That's why some of these are highlighted. I'm going to take the highlighted ones out. I'm going to uncheck and update so that way I can use this again for next year and not have to recreate the wheel. So one thing I want to do is bold this right here where it says after last day of classes. You can use the capital B up here or control and command B. I think that's kind of basic knowledge but just in case so I had it split because I was working on things while students were still there versus working on things after students are gone okay so up here I have one box that did not get checked it's updating the warm-up slides I'm literally just changing a font and it's something to do kind of in the background of other tasks so I actually moved it to the beginning of the year so I'm going to take this one out and anything I highlighted in yellow is something that I only needed for this school year. And that's just a way for me to update this a little bit faster. So these are just tasks that they're done. I'm not going to have to do them again. So I'm going to go through and uncheck all of these. So now this is all ready for next year. This one is a link. If you ever want to link something, you're going to highlight the text and hit Control or Command K. And then this window will pop up and you can paste into there. They also give you suggestions of things to link to, which is pretty cool. The other thing I'm going to update here are these dates. I like to keep my emails labeled by year, but I do that at the end of the year. And I'll delete the emails from three years ago. And I keep them, I don't know that I need to, but um, you know, CYA, if you know, you know. And I'll add the labels in for next school year. So I'm gonna update that. And then we can go down to the after last day of classes. Um, so these labels, I had to change over from math seven to general geometry, so I can take that out. As I went through the list and everything was getting checked off, it got a little bit harder to find the things that I needed to still do. So that's why I highlighted those in blue. And I did not get to try out different desk arrangements. Um, I might leave my desks how they are, but I was kind of curious about how else they might look. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in on my beginning of the year page and I'm going to unhighlight this and take this one out because that's uh, just for this one year thing and I'm going to uncheck all of these so now we are ready to go for next year so initially this just started out as a to-do list for the end of the year but then I started thinking of other things I wanted to have easy access to. So now I just have a checklist. I have it bookmarked in my toolbar up above this, which I have not shown on the screen just because it has sensitive information there. So now I have a page that's for 
what to do for the beginning of the school year. I have my supplies that I need to order, um, the end of the year list we just saw, and then just things to bring to the Regents exam because I was brainstorming different things and I was like, let me make sure I have this someplace so um, I don't forget because proctoring a Regents exam is something you only do like once to twice a year. So having a list is actually really helpful. So let's talk about the document tabs. So the document tabs is something that showed up during this past school year. And I actually really like it. You don't have to see it. You can hide it. If it's hidden, you just have the little icon. You can click and bring it open. I like to have it over here just to see it. And you're going to click the plus sign to add a new tab. And it's basically like starting a whole new page for you. If you think about how a page break would work in Google Docs or even in Microsoft Word, it's just creating a fresh start for you in the document. But if you're using a page break, you're having to scroll to find it. And the tabs make it so you don't need to scroll. So once you get a tab there, you can go to the three dots and you could add a sub tab. So a tab within a tab. You could delete it if you don't like it. You can duplicate it. This is my favorite. You can rename it. So you can name it anything you want. And then it's essentially like a bookmark in the document that you can come back to really easily. You could choose an emoji, which is not something I've ever done before. So. That's cute, it'll change the icon in front. Um, you can copy the link. So that means that the link would go not to just the document, but specifically to this tab. And that way you could share it with someone. You can show an outline, you can move it up. Um, you can move it into, so if you wanted to make it a tab within a tab, you could do that. But you can also just move it by clicking and dragging. So I've also gone and used document tabs with this other document. I like to keep a list of all the changes that I want to make for the next year. And I went ahead and actually tabbed the old changes from previous years. I just kind of like having a record of it, even though these are done, I might as well just delete them. Um, just having them there is a little, I don't know, like a reminder if I ever wanted to go back and see when did I change this. It's at least there in a record. So I have this just done up by the year. So this is going to be for next school year. And I like to keep this document also bookmarked in my toolbar on Google Chrome. And that way I can open it really easily, even during a lesson. But usually it's right after the lesson. I'll type out any changes I want to make for the following school year. Okay, so I've switched accounts. This is my business account. And this is the document that I use to draft my emails. So emails that go out to my email list are all in one Google Doc. And this is something that I made before the tabs were there. And in order to get it so that you could go to the different sections of the email, I used headings. So I wanted to show that because you could use that in addition to the tabs and get the same effect. Actually, I wouldn't say it's the same effect, it's just similar. It's going to take your document and break it down so that you can easily get to the different chunks of the document. Um, they work basically like links, but with the tabs, it's like you're starting in a fresh document, but now it's kind of like a document within a document, similar to how a Google Sheet will have the different sheet tabs at the bottom. But in that case, each sheet is separate from the previous sheet. Tabs are like that for the documents, but with these here, these are just different headings and it's just breaking the document up. So I know I explained it twice, but hopefully one of those explanations made sense. So with these, I'm just using the headings, which is one of the features that I used to always ignore. Like I would go right to the font and all the different editing tools there, but the headings right here, you can choose between normal text, a title, subtitle. I usually start at heading one and then the subheadings are heading two and you can go down to heading four and then you got some options at the bottom but I just like to make heading one like one of the big breaks in the document so I'm gonna make this normal text real quick so if I have that there and I change it to heading one you'll see it is bigger it's going to add some space at the top and bottom but most importantly it's going to pop up over here where your tabs are if you don't like the spaces above and below, which I don't, but sometimes I just live with it, I can go over here to the spacing and I can remove the spacing before the paragraph and remove the spacing after the paragraph. And now it's just that, that bit of text. 
Also when it's a heading, you could choose to bold it. You could choose to change its size, its color, whatever you like. All those options are still there, but um, it, making it a heading really means it's gonna be showing up here. Um, and this one here is a heading two. So to show the difference, so normal text versus heading two. Here's another example where I use this. This is the notes that I had for the summer math session. Um, this is just an image that I put in on the, the front page here, but I kept it all in one tab because I was thinking that'd be less confusing for people. And also some of these are on the same page. I didn't want to have it start on a separate page. So having all of these here is hopefully helpful for people to find the different parts that they need of the notes. And I decided to do a Google Doc rather than the usual, which is like a PDF that you have to print out because this means you can actually just go and type in and add your own notes and then it will expand as it goes versus you being limited to the spaces that are there on a page already. So on here I do have some emojis and in order to get the emojis with the headings, it has to be part of the text that you're making into a heading. I don't have the option to add an emoji just like I do for the, the document tabs. Now as far as teaching goes with Google Docs, this is primarily what I think of is giving students like a question or a prompt and then giving them space to answer. I think of it more as like a living document versus when you use Microsoft Word. I mean, unless you have a Microsoft school where you could share a template like that. With Word, it's more like creating the worksheet that you print out and give to the students. But with Google Docs, since you can give them a doc that they can work on on their own, I think of it more like a living document where they're adding in their own stuff, their own links, their own text etc. So that's kind of like the key shift between Microsoft Word and Google Docs in my mind. In math, I haven't really used Google Docs this way, but what I have used it for was the SEL lessons that we have to do where you give students like time to reflect. I would give them a Google Doc that actually looked a lot like this where there was a question and then a table, like just a one by one table where they could type in their answer. Now I know some teachers like to use Google Docs to create their worksheets. That's not my favorite, but if that's what you like to do, then by all means, do what makes you happy and what works for you and your students. If you would like a tutorial that's more making a worksheet in Google Docs, uh, let me know in the comments and I will do it. It would be kind of like a, you're gonna have to watch me feel my way through it because it's not something I typically do. But the big benefit of a Google Doc that you're using for a worksheet is that any changes you make are automatically saved. So it's really, really easy to update whenever you need to. So if that's something you wanna see, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.